One, two, three, air high five. Don't touch me. Social distancing. It remains appropriate. As you can see at St. John's today, there is plenty of room uh, here today for now. We look forward to the day that you guys fill this space again. It's coming. Um, we wanted to take the opportunity just to check in with you early this week and see um, where things lie. Um, Rand and I have been talking a lot about um, Lent and Easter and Resurrection. Miranda, um, share, share again what's been on your mind lately. I will. So I've talked about my walks a lot, but I'm not going to stop because that's where I have some of my best time with God and I have some revelations. We seemingly are in an endless Lent right now, right? Like even if someone wasn't practicing Lent, we're being asked to give up a lot of stuff right now. <laughs> yeah. From, you know, just daily, easy, comfortable pleasures to being at home. And it's just like the country, the world is, is just stopped in some ways. That's very Lenten. It's appropriate. How can we apply that to our spiritual lives? How can we make that meaningful for us right now? Um, and I was saying that I have, I have seen posted on Facebook, and it could be sensationalist news, but I don't think so that like the canals in Venice are getting a little bit cleaner since there hasn't been the pollution and the people and the traffic. And so animals are coming back. The water is clearer. Parts of China, the sky is cleaner. These are signs of resurrection in the middle of Lent. And when we don't know what Easter is going to look like, and we don't really have an expectation of it, can I find Easter in the midst of all of this going on? And I think our Christian faith says yes. Like resurrection and hope are always, always, always the final word. That doesn't mean that we ignore the fact that we're in a Lent. Or Funerals are, are, are resurrection Easter liturgies. That's right. right. Funerals are on purpose. Right. And sometimes we need to acknowledge death and acknowledge where we need to mourn something. Yeah. Um, we don't have to spring to Easter. But the ultimate right. resurrection yeah, already happened. I mean, it, it is it is already there, and so if I am looking for it in other places, and I see it in nature, and I see it in my relationships with people, and I see it in people's relationships with each other, my neighbors are on their porches, we are talking, I've seen people that I haven't seen in months, we're at a distance, but we're, we are being community, that's resurrection, is it not? Yes. It is, uh, is, the, is, the, is the short answer. And, you know, one of the things that we are in the middle of, um, and I think, you know, you're, you're so correct about our task is to, is to find resurrection in this time. Mm -hmm. Because this, this Lent, perhaps like none other that I can remember, is not optional. Yeah. We, are, we are in a time where uh, we are restricted in what we do and, and, and how we are together. Um, and even in the midst of that, there are signs of life. You know, walking around, you see things, you see things blooming. Um, the way that this community is, is morphing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's for a time, but I have a firm belief that some of what we're doing right now is going to go with us into the future and make us stronger. Um, life, uh, life and death, uh, Lent and Easter, those things are side by side. They're two sides of the same coin. Uh, always and um, though part of me grieves uh, and, and part of me remains um, anxious um, another part of me uh, remains hopeful yeah. and, and faithful and it makes me and this is the idea I'm going to put out there it, I wonder about how we have Easter even if we can't be together that is one of the saddest thoughts I've had uh, uh, no, and at I the same it. time I I've been thinking of ways I can do an Easter liturgy in my home and proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is resurrected and alive and like totally present in every way for all time and in all places. How do we do that scattered about? And we may not have to. I mean, I'm, we, well, we don't know enough. Yeah, we don't know enough. Um, um, but, but, but if we needed to, are we enough a people of resurrection that it is just so inherent? And so I'm like... Could we craft a liturgy for families to do together or neighbors? Yeah. If that's interesting to you, let yeah. me know. If not, I probably am going to plan on doing it for myself. Uh, but think about it. Just just keeping, oh, it, this is also kind of Advent too, like keeping awake, keeping alert, keeping on the watch. 
I've been accused of being a curmudgeon when I say this before. Miranda has accused me of being a curmudgeon before, but um, Advent is a, is a winter's Lent, right? It is a time of preparation for that which is coming. Um, and, and, and for the faithful, it's Easter. It's the empty tomb. Uh, for the world, um, it is a return to, um, to health. But I think uh, an opportunity for us to examine you know, Miranda's point about the environment. How can we, how can we live um, more fully at peace with, with one another and with the creation? Yeah. Um, it's an opportunity. Um, it is a, it is a, a non-optional uh, chance for us to examine how we live and how we live in relationship with mm-hmm. each other. And people are noticing this. I mean, I follow enough stuff on Instagram and Facebook and otherwise. Um, hmm. Christians aren't the only ones who have a word in this. Other people are noticing this. But let's name it. Like, let's claim let's call the it what it message is. that yeah. we have. And if we can't be one of the main voices out there saying, this is the time for renewal of the soul, a renewal of the earth, a renewal of creation of which we are part, and we're seeing it in nature, we're part of that. Yeah. Um, it could be the best Easter ever. Amen, sister. Look, uh, yeah. I should be able to pull it. You are preaching. It's, <laughs> it's good. I need to hear it. I think, um, yeah. We as Christians should be good at this rebirth thing, right? I mean, that's that's our story. Um, I, I was telling Miranda recently, um, this is my first Easter as rector at St. John's, and uh, you can look in the room right now and see, uh, you know, if you close your eyes, you can imagine it's Easter morning, and there are 600 people here, and we got uh, the smock dresses and the sear sucker out and the suede shoes and the, the whole nine, the altar the full capes, of flowers. The white, beautiful silk capes. It's called a cope, dude. I meant cope. Cope. It cope. does it like a cape. It does look like it. It's a cope. I it, know that. It's true. Is there one of your size? Yes. Okay. Someone recently did think you took were it really, in. She took it up for me. I was going to wear it at Easter. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll celebrate. We'll, well, we'll wear it when we do Easter. If not this year, next year. <laughs> right? agree to that if, if, well, if we not have, this year we next get, year we have 50 days of easter regardless of whether we have easter sunday resurrection I, sunday I so agree. i plan on wearing it my cope okay okay i've been thinking about about uh easter a lot and what it's going to look like and and you know part of me really grieves and goes man this is you know this saint john's does easter well you know whatever that means but you know if you look at the at the gospels the first easter day was two or three people outside at dawn at an empty tomb women um, women Being that's right to proclaim that news that's right that's right so so i think um maybe i'm maybe i'm gonna have to let go of some of, of my expectations about what easter is going to look like at st john's but in doing so is it not the opportunity to realign more fully with what easter is and how we should celebrate it um we are now um we're getting closer to, to Easter. Um, what else is what else has been going on in your world? How's the state of your soul otherwise? I, I am still doing my my be not do thing. It really helps me to have a morning routine and to wake up um, to wake up a little early and get the quiet of the neighborhood and watch the Cardinals. We we were talking about this. We love our bird watching. Yeah. Uh, But there is something in my Eckhart Tolle book is actually about like there are certain symbols that that most human cultures agree on as being um, almost like just more mystical and just where we have experiences with God and birds are one. And I'm like, it helps me to wake up and and make make a good, a better cup of coffee. I don't do as good as Jay does, but I've been drinking some better stuff. (laughs) And, um, and eat well and sleep well and and keep in touch, but make time for my um, my meditations and my Bible reading and my all of my spiritual tasks as well as my physical. So that morning routine that starts my day right yeah. in the midst of this weird schedule, that that's how mm. I'm trying to stay grounded. Um, so well, stay the course, um, stay keep the faith. Um, call us, email us, text us, whatever. We um, wait to hear from you. Absolutely. We, we are here. Um, we remain available in those ways. And when, uh, if circumstance demands it, um, we'll be glad to see you all in person. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful day. See you again.